Hello women made in the image of God. Today we are back with another Bible in a year video and we get to read 1 Kings 10 through 14 and Luke 24 1 through 35. So due to the nature of the length of the notes and the text that we're going through, we're just going to read the scripture first and then at the end of the video I'm going to put all the notes. So we'll read and um, yeah. So let's read. Let's pray and let's read the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessing of getting to read your word together. Lord, we just ask that um, we ask that you would be our guide, Lord, um, as we read. Lord, that you would be um, the lamp, that your word would be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, and that you would be guiding us. Through your word, Lord, help us to be fully engaged, um, no matter what um, state we're in. I apologize for for yawning, Father, and I just I want to be. I want, to, I want to learn more about you, God. I want to spend time with you and your word. And, um, yeah, Lord, please um, guide us by your spirit. Holy Spirit, please lead us in the truth and show us Christ. Show us your gospel, God. Um, we need you desperately every day, Lord. And we deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Um, and Lord, we want to delight in you. We want to enjoy you. We want to spend time with you, Lord. We want to commune with you, Lord. Um, we thank you for making a way that we can commune with you because of what you've, you've done for us in Christ. Thank you so much, Lord. We do not take this time lightly or methodically, but cherish this time with you, Lord. Um, you are so precious, you are our creator, our savior, our lord, our king, the king of kings, the lord of lords, mighty. Um, and just, yeah, may your will be done in this time, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, first things first, open up to 1 Kings chapter 10. So, 1 Kings chapter 10, and we're going to get to go until 14. 1 Kings 10 Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, She came to test him with hard questions. 1 Kings 10 Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices, and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpass the report that I heard. Happy are your men, happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king, that you may execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again came such an abundance of spices as these that the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram which brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a very great amount of almug wood and precious stones. And the king made of the almug wood supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, also lyres and harps for the singers. No such almug wood has come or been seen to this day. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked besides what was given her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her own land with her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, besides that which came from the explorers and from the business of the merchants, and from all the kings of the west and from the governors of the land. King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold, 600 shekels of gold went into each shield, and he made 300 shields of beaten gold, 3 minas of gold went into each shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with the finest gold. The throne had six steps, and at the back of the throne was a calf's head, and on each side of the seat were armrests and two lions standing beside the armrests. While twelve lions stood there, one on each end of a step on the six steps. The like of it was never made in any kingdom. 
All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. Silver was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon. For the king had a fleet of ships of Tarshish at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years, the fleet of ships of Tarshish used to come, bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Thus, King Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And the whole earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Every one of them brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, myrrh, spices, horses and mules, so much year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as plentiful as the sycamore of the Shephelah. And Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt and Kui, and the king's traders received them from Kui at a price. A chariot could be imported from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. And so through the king's traders they were exported to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. First Kings 11 Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not wholly follow the Lord, as David his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites, on the mountain east of Jerusalem. And so he did for all his foreign wives who made offerings and sacrifice to their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Lord the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your practice, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you, and will give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of David your father, I will not do it in your days, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son, for the sake of David my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, that I have chosen. And the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the royal house in Edom. For when David was in Edom, and Joab the commander of the army went up to bury the slain, he struck down every male in Edom. For Joab and all Israel remained there six months until he had cut off every male in Edom. But Hadad fled to Egypt, together with certain Edomites of his father's servants, Hadad still being a little child. They set out from Midian, and came to Paran, and took men with them from Paran, and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave him a house and assigned him an allowance of food, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tapanes the queen. And the sister of Tapanes bore him Ganubath his son, whom Tapanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Ganubath was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab the commander of the army was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. But Pharaoh said to him, What have you lacked with me that you are now seeking to go to your own country? And he said to him, Only let me depart. God also raised up as an adversary to him, Reason, the son of Eliada, who had fled from his master Hadad Ezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men about him and became leader of a marauding band after the killing by David. And they went to Damascus and lived there and made him king in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, doing harm as Hadad did. And he loathed Israel and reigned over Syria. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite of Zerida, a servant of Solomon, whose mother's name was Zeruiah, a widow, also lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the reason why he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built the millow and closed up the breach of the city of David, his father. The man Jeroboam was very able, and when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he gave him charge over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. And at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the road. Now Ahijah had dressed himself in a new garment, and the two of them were alone in the open country. Then Ahijah laid hold of the new garment that was on him, and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I am about to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon, and will give you ten tribes. But he shall have one tribe, for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city that I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me, and worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Milcom, the god of the Ammonites. And they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my rules, as David his father did. Nevertheless, 
I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him ruler all the days of his life, for the sake of David my servant whom I chose, who kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it to you, ten tribes. Yet to his son I will give one tribe, that David my servant may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen to put my name. And I will take you, and you shall reign over all that your soul desires, and you shall be king over Israel. And if you will listen to all that I command you, and will walk in my ways, and do what is right in my eyes by keeping my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, I will be with you, and will build you a sure house, as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you, and I will afflict the offspring of David because of this, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. First Kings 12 Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. And as soon as Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Go away for three days, then come again to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon his father while he was yet alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be a servant to this people today and serve them and speak good words to them when you answer them, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel that the old men gave him and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him and stood before him. And he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? And the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to this people who said to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you lighten it for us. Thus shall you say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. And now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people harshly, and forsaking the counsel that the old men had given him, he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by the Lord, that he might fulfill his word, which the Lord spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What portion do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel! Look now to your own house, David! So Israel went to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam hurried to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. And when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people. Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your relatives, the people of Israel. Every man return to his home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord and went home again, according to the word of the Lord. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and lived there. And he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their lord, to Rehoboam king of Judah. And they will kill me, and return to Rehoboam king of Judah. So the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold. And he said to the people, You have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Behold your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And he set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Then this thing became a sin, for the people went as far as Dan to be before one. He also made temples on high places, and appointed priests from among all the people who were not of the Levites. And Jeroboam appointed a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the feast that was in Judah, and he offered sacrifices on the altar. 
So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar that he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, in the month that he had devised from his own heart. And he instituted a feast for the people of Israel, and went up to the altar to make offerings. 1 Kings 13 And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make offerings. And the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And when the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar at Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat now the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. And the man of God said to the king, If you give me half your house, I will not go in with you, and I will not eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water nor return by the way that you came. So he went another way, and did not return by the way that he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet lived in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told to their father the words that he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? And his sons showed him the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he mounted it. And he went after the man of God, and found him, sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you or go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You shall neither eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way that you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. And as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, and he cried to the man of God who came from Judah, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the command that the Lord your God commanded you, but have come back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. And after he had eaten bread and drunk, he saddled the donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. And as he went away, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was thrown in the road, and the donkey stood beside it. The lion also stood beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown in the road, and the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. And when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard of it, he said, It is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him according to the word that the Lord spoke to him. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. And they saddled it. And he went and found his body thrown in the road, and the donkey and the lion standing beside the body. The lion had not eaten the body or torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the body of the man of God, and laid it on the donkey, and brought it back to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid the body in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother! <laughs> and after he had buried him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying that he called out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places that are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. After this thing, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but made priests for the high places again from among all the people. Any who would, he ordained to be priests of the high places. And this thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam, so as to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. 1 Kings 14 At that time, Abijah the son of Jeroboam fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, and disguise yourself, that it not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say to her. When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with unbearable news for you. 
Go tell Jeroboam, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because I exalted you from among the people and made you leader over my people Israel and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. And yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart, doing only that which was right in my eyes. But you have done evil above all who were before you and have gone and made for yourself other gods and metal images, provoking me to anger and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free, in Israel, and will burn up the house of Jeroboam, as a man burns up dung, until it is all gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And anyone who dies in the open country, the birds of the heavens shall eat. For the Lord has spoken it. Arise, therefore, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die, and all Israel shall mourn for him, and bury him. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today. And henceforth, the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water and root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their fathers and scatter them beyond the Euphrates, because they have made their Asherim, provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and made Israel to sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. And as she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. Now Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonite. And Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars, and Asherim on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also male cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their place shields of bronze, and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers, in the city of David. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonite, and Abijam his son reigned in his place. First Kings 15 Luke 20 You know what? Actually, let's go through the notes first before we head into Luke 24. So we're going to go through the notes for First Kings. First Kings 10 through 14, chapter 10, 10, 1 Sheba. Two main suggestions for this location are southwest Arabia, modern Yemen, and northern Arabia, the land of the Sabians, Job 1, 15, 6, 19, PS 7, 10, concerning the name of the Lord. The Queen of Sheba comes to Jerusalem, not simply because of Solomon's fame, but because she recognizes the relationship between Solomon's fame and the Lord. Hard questions. Wishing to discover whether Solomon's reputation is deserved, the Queen of Sheba tests him with hard questions. C.F. Judge. 14.12. 10.5. The food of his table. See notes on 2.7 and 4.22. His cupbearers. The cupbearer was an important post in ancient Near Eastern governments. General 40.40.19. Ni. 1.11. Be the, the Queen of Sheba specifically mentions the personal name of the God of Israel in her statement to Solomon. V.V. 6.9. Jesus cites the Queen of Sheba in his indictment against the people of his own day. Matt 12.42, Luke 11.31, 10 and 11 fleet of Hiram. In addition to helping build Solomon's fleet, Hiram of Tyre uses some of his own ships to transport goods for Solomon. 9.26.28, 10.22, Almagwood, 
Suggestions about the nature of this wood include red sandalwood and juniper. It was apparently quite valuable and rare. Ten, twelve lyres and harps for the singers. Israelite royalty probably sponsored musicians to compose appropriate hymns and psalms for worship. Ten, thirteen Solomon gave. They exchanged gifts. They ate ten. Ten, fourteen came to Solomon in one year. Annual steady tribute is necessary to support all of Solomon's major projects and outlays. Ten, fifteen from the explorers. Merchants. Solomon controls a large territory on the trade routes north to Mesopotamia and south to Egypt. Tariffs on the goods transported through Israel are substantial. Governors of the land. C4, 7, 19, 10, 16, 17 large shields. These extremely heavy and valuable shields are made chiefly for ceremonial and aesthetic reasons. The use of such shields as a visible sign of a king's wealth and status is not unique to Solomon. After a campaign dated C714 BC, King Sargon II claimed to have taken six shields of gold from a temple. 10 to 18, a great ivory throne. Solomon uses the great influx of tribute to support an extravagant lifestyle. VV 18 to 21, 23, 25. His throne is probably made of wood inlaid with ivory and gold. Ivory carvings plated with gold have been found in the Assyrian royal palaces at Nimrud. Solomon's desire for the finest in furnishings and buildings burdens his subjects. 12 4. 10 21 drinking vessels were of gold. Beautiful golden vessels from ancient times have been found in Egypt. 13th century BC. Ugarit, on the Mediterranean coast in modern Syria, 13th century BC, and Persia, 6th to 4th centuries BC. 1022, a fleet of ships. These so-called ships of Tarshish are built to make long ocean voyages. Tarshish, perhaps to be identified with Tartessos, located in modern-day Spain on the very western end of the Mediterranean Sea. John, one, with the fleet of Hiram. See note on 926. 10 to Razor 6, chariots and horsemen. The law of the king in Dute. 1716 forbids the monarch to accumulate great numbers of chariots and horses from Egypt. 1028 Egypt and Cayu. It is possible that Solomon finances the build-up of his military forces by his trading in the famous Cilician horses and the superior chariots of Egypt. Ref 29. 1029 imported. They were exported. Not only does Solomon amass chariots and horses, he also initiates substantial trade in these commodities through the king's traders v28. In doing this, Solomon is exploiting Israel's strategic geographic location. The kings of the Hittites the Hittites live in Anatolia, Asia Minor. During Solomon's reign, they are no longer the unified empire they were between 1375 and 1240 BC. In Solomon's day, they are ruled by a number of minor kings, each with his own domain. Chapter 11. 11 one loved many foreign women, whereas in the first part of his reign, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. 3. 3. He later loved many foreign women. Diplomatic marriages between the dynasties of various kingdoms were common in the ancient Near East as a means of ratifying treaties, but Dut. 1717 forbids the multiplication of royal wives in Israel. Moreover, there are prohibitions against marrying foreign wives in Canaan. X. Dut. 714. Josh. 2003 12 13. 11. Ha. For the warning. 11 4. As was the heart of David his father. David is consistently presented as a model king. 3 14, 9, 4 14, 15, 3, 2, 8, 19, 22. He was not without sin. Do Sam. 11 12, 24, 1 15, 1 kin. 15 5. But when he sinned, his repentance was exemplary. Sue so Sam. 12 16, 17, 2 4, run 17. David's devotion to God was unparalleled. 11. The Phoenician goddess of love and fertility. Called Astarte by the Greeks, C.F. Judge. 213. To Kin. 2313. Milcom. Or Molech. He was the national god of the Ammonites and was associated with child sacrifice. Levlev. 1821. 116. Solomon did what was evil. Solomon's many sins violate fundamental principles of Israelite religion. Multiplying wives. V's one note. Worshipping other gods. X. 20. 3 5. And building sanctuaries for foreign deities. 7. CF X 24 Throughout 1 and 2 Kings monarchs are judged by whether they do what is right or what is evil in the eyes of the Lord e.g. 1 Kin 15 11 26 34 11 7 Chemosh the national god of the Moabites 2 Kin 3 26 27 11 10 after other gods C314 969 11 11 tear the kingdom from you CVV 29 39 11 12. I will not do it in your days. God's great love for David causes him to temper his judgment on Solomon in two respects. First, God postpones the division until the reign of Solomon's son. Second, God does not remove the entire kingdom from the Davidic dynasty. Board 11 13 1 tribe. 
This probably refers to Judah, 12 to 20, 2 Kin, 1718. If Judah is already assumed and therefore not mentioned, another tribe is meant, such as Benjamin, 12, 21, or Simeon, which was allocated territory within the region settled by Judah, Josh, 19, 1. For the sake of Jerusalem, Jerusalem is God's chosen city, the site of Israel's central sanctuary anticipated in Dut, and constructed by Solomon. Jerusalem is a central symbol of God's love for his people and the communion between God and his people throughout the Bible. PSS 68 print 29 122 and 20 135 21 137 57 is 62 1 Dan Reverend 312 21 2 10 1115 when David was in Edom see 2 Sam 8 14 an earlier victory by Joab is reversed as Hadad returns from exile in Egypt and successfully rebels against Solomon v 25 1118 from Midian the Midianites live east of Moab and Edom Paran this area is in the Sinai Peninsula southeast of Kadesh. Gave him a house. Taking notice of the emerging power of David's dynasty, Pharaoh has sheltered David's foes in the hope that one day they will curtail Israel's power. V. Ancient treaties forbade providing asylum to political rebels. 1122 Only let me depart. Following David's death, Hadad wanted to return to his own land, despite the Pharaoh's objections, probably because he wanted to liberate it from Israelite domination. V. 25. 1123 Adversary. Formerly Solomon could boast that in his reign there was neither adversary nor misfortune. 5-4. But now God has afflicted him with a succession of enemies. Hadadezer king of Zobah. On David's conquest of Hadadezer in Syria, see Tukas and Sam. 8-3-6. 1-15-19. 24 King in Damascus. From his base in Damascus, Rezon persistently causes trouble for Solomon. 11-26-43. Jeroboam rebels against Solomon and escapes to Egypt until Solomon's death. 11-26. Jeroboam the son of Nebat, against the king. Whereas Hadad and Rezon are external enemies raised up by God, Jeroboam, an Ephraimite, is an internal foe. Zerida, 21 miles, 34 kilometers, east of Joppa, in the territory of Ephraim. 1127 the Milo, see note on 915. 1128, over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. Jeroboam is in charge of the laborers Solomon drafted from the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, 513-16, and is well aware of the resentment these tribes feel toward Solomon, 12 4. 11 29 Shelonite. Shiloh is in Ephraim, about 12 miles, 19 kilometers, east of Zerida. 11 30 tore it into 12 pieces. Ahijah performs a symbolic action, that is, he acts out a parable. Such colorful actions dramatize the reality of the spoken word and God's intervention in history. 22 11. CF. Yes. 20. Jair. 13 1. Eles case. In this case, the torn pieces of Ahijah's robe illustrate the impending division of the kingdom. 1131 Take for yourself ten pieces. On behalf of the Lord, Ahijah summons Jeroboam to take ten of the twelve pieces, symbolizing the ten northern tribes over which Jeroboam will shortly become king. As with the earlier rebellions of Hadad and Rizon, Jeroboam's insurrection is a divine judgment against Solomon. 1132 One tribe. See note on V13. 1134 I will make him ruler. See note on V12. 1135 Out of his son's hand, that is, from Solomon's successor, Rehoboam. 12. 124. 1136. That David my servant may always have a lamp. The metaphor of a lamp signifies the permanence of the Davidic dynasty in the city of Jerusalem. 15.4. CF. 2 Sam. 21.17. 2 Kin. 82 CHR. 21. 7 PS. 107. God's commitment to David will have a profound effect on the future survival of the Davidic dynasty. 2 Sam. 7.16. 11.37. Over all that your soul desires. A similar promise is given to David. 2 Sam. 3.21 king over Israel, that is, over the ten northern tribes. During the period of the divided kingdom, the term Israel most often designates these ten tribes. Judah denotes the domain still ruled by David's descendants. 1138. Listen to all that I command you. Jeroboam will be subject to the same covenantal stipulations that were operative for Saul, David, and Solomon. 2, 3, 4, and notes. I will be with you. An assurance of God's presence and sustenance. Do. 31 day. Judge. 218, 612, 16, 1 Sam, 319, Sue, 510, 79. Ahijah hopes that Jeroboam will be more loyal to the covenant than Solomon was. 1139, but not forever. This phrase looks forward to a restoration of Davidic power. Such a restoration is later attempted by Josiah of Judah, but he is unable to complete it. 2 Kin, 22, 23. The prophets also look for a renewal of Davidic rule. Jair, Bezek, 3423, 3715, 28. Hoes, 3 5, Amos, 9 11. These hopes are fulfilled in Jesus Christ the Messiah. Matt, 1, Mark, 11 40, Shashak, 
Shishak, or Shoshanka Fas, was the first king over the 22nd dynasty and ruled 945-924 BC, 1425-26. For many years before his rule, Egypt had been weak. But under his direction, Egypt began to increase in power. Later, Shishak attacked the two kingdoms of Israel and Judah, recording the invasion on the walls of the temple at Karnak. 1141, the Book of the Acts of Solomon, one of the sources no longer in existence, used by the writer of one and two kings. Other official sources are mentioned in 1419-29. 1142-40 years, approximately 970-930 BC, 1143 slept with his fathers. C210. This is idiomatic for burial. Common burials in ancient Israel were familial and generational. Chapter 12. 12. 1. 24. King Rehoboam's refusal to listen to the people's request to lighten their burdens sparks secession by the northern tribes. From this point on, the northern kingdom is usually referred to as Israel and the southern kingdom as Judah. 12. For Shechem, this major Israelite center associated with the renewal of the covenant with the Lord Josh. 24. 133. Is in northern Ephraim, 30 miles, 48 kilometers, north of Jerusalem. The city is located on the central ridge road, or spin, that in ancient times went from Shechem in the north to Hebron in the south. The route was a commonly used thoroughfare from the time of the patriarchs, General 527, to make him king. Rehoboam travels to Shechem to be made king by acclamation. See 1 Sam. 1115 in the covenant the northern tribes made with David in 2 Sam. 5, 1, 3. As it turns out, the northern tribes do not accept Rehoboam. 12 fo, as soon as Jeroboam heard of it, that is, about the death of Solomon, 1143, and the subsequent attempt of Rehoboam to become king over all Israel. 12 4. Your father made our yoke heavy. The expression yoke is characteristically used for the oppression of the Israelites by foreign rulers. 2613, Dut, 2848 is, 94, 1027, 1425, 2007, Ezek, 34, 27. Its use here is an indictment of Solomon for imposing harsh labor on his own people. 513, 922, 1128, and notes, 126, the old men. These older and experienced advisors are well acquainted with the traditions of Israel and understand how the monarchy affects the lives of ordinary Israelites. 12.7 If you will be a servant, though entrusted with power, the Israelite king is to establish justice and so serve both God and his people. Dut. 17.14.20. P.S. 72. 12.8 The young men. These young advisors, like Rehoboam himself, have grown up in the royal court. Apparently they think that Rehoboam's privileges are inalienable, like those of an oriental monarch. 12.10 My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. An arrogant and unwise boast about how much more oppressive Rehoboam's yoke will be than his father's V11. 12 Evan Scorpions. By making reference to this deadly arachnid, Rehoboam is telling the people that he will increase their oppression. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah. 12.15 By the Lord. God's agency is no excuse for Rehoboam's foolishness. Rather, God is using Rehoboam's misguided actions as an instrument for fulfilling Ahijah's prophecy. 11.31.39. 12.16 Look now to your own house, David. David refers to the dynasty of David. The northern tribes secede from Judah and from the authority of David's descendants. For an identical taunt against David himself, see 2 Sam 21. 12 and 17 people of Israel, that is, members of the northern tribes who have settled in the south. 12 18 Adoram. Rehoboam unwisely sends out the chief of forced labor to quell the uprising. 4 6 5 14, where the name is given as Adonam, and to reimpose oppressive conditions. Oh representatives of the northern tribes, 12-1, 12 and 19 to this day. See note on 8-8. 8 8. 12-20 to the assembly. Jeroboam does not seem to play an active role in the assembly at Shechem. Once he is made king, however, he takes charge over Israelite affairs. VV 25-33. 12-22, the man of God. This common expression designates a prophet. 1 Sam. 2-27. 1 Kin. 13-1-2 Kin. 4-7. 12-23, the rest of the people. Probably a reference to members of the northern tribes who have settled in Judah for 17 and sojourners living in that tribal area. 1224 returned to his home, for this thing is from me. The prophet Shemaiah reaffirms what the prophet Ahijah earlier declared. 11. 29. 39. The division of the kingdom conforms to the will of God. The existence of two realms is ordained by God, and each now has the opportunity to prove its loyalty to his covenant. 1225. 33. In an effort to retain the people's loyalty, Jeroboam makes golden calves at Bethel and Dan, and institutes an alternative and forbidden system of worship for Israel. 1225 Penuel. Jeroboam consolidates his rule by fortifying Shechem and then Penuel, a strategic city along the river Jabbok on the other side of the Jordan River. 1227 If this people go up to offer sacrifices, Jeroboam fears that religious unity between north and south will lead to a return to political unity as well. 
12, 28, two calves of gold. Canaanites characteristically depicted their gods standing on bulls, calves, or other animals. Jeroboam probably prepares his golden calves as a kind of throne platform for God, not as images of the Lord. Nevertheless, his innovation is an invitation for Canaanite religious practices to enter the northern kingdom. CF. X. 32. 4. Behold your gods. The words of Jeroboam echo those spoken by Aaron at Mount Sinai when he set up the golden calf. X. 32. 12. 29. Bethel. And... Dan. These sites are the centers farthest south and north in Jeroboam's kingdom. Bethel. Lit. House of God is a historic Israelite worship center. General 12, 8, 8, 11, 19, 35, 6, 7. Judge 20, 26, 28, 1 Sam, 7, 16. 12, 30, this thing became a sin. The establishment of national religious centers in competition with the one in Jerusalem is repeatedly referred to in the books of Kings as the sin of Jeroboam. 13, 34, 14, 16, 15, 26, 13, 3, 3, 10, 29, 13, 2, 17, 22. Unfortunately, every northern king follows the path blazed by Jeroboam. None of them tries to institute a thorough reform. Without determined opposition, the sin of Jeroboam brings about the deterioration and demise of Israel. To kin. 1722, 23, 1231 temples on high places. See note on 3 through. By promoting worship at the high places, Jeroboam introduces further innovations into the cultic practices of Israel. Priests from among all the people. Jeroboam creates his own priesthood without regard to priestly qualifications or Levitical genealogy. Dute, 18.1.1, Judge, 1.17.10.13. 12.32, appointed a feast. Perhaps he imitates the Feast of Booths. Lev, 23.34, 1 Kin, 8 to Sue. 12.33, the month that he had devised, that is, one not sanctioned by God. By instituting his own religious centers, festival, and priesthood, Jeroboam seeks to disassociate himself and his people from the Jerusalem temple and the worship practice there. This clearly goes against the intent of Jeroboam's commission from God as described in 11, 36, 39, and 12, 15, which mandates a political but not a religious separation between Israel and Judah. Loyalty to the covenant Revavanan 38 requires loyalty to the temple established for God's honor, as well as loyalty to its priests, festivals, and sacrifices. Chapter 13, 13, 1, man of God. See note on 12, 22. Judah, God sends a southern prophet to denounce Jeroboam's northern cult. 13, Josiah. He rules Judah 640-609 BC, 300 years after Jeroboam, and brings a major reformation to Judah based upon the word of God, 2 Kin, 22-23. Sacrifice, the priests of the high places. This prophecy is realized during Josiah's reign, 2 Kin, 23-15-20. By burning human bones on the altar, Josiah desecrates it and makes it unfit for continued use as a sacred precinct. 13-3 Sign, the prophets sometimes give a sign, an immediate proof to corroborate a prophecy. To Kin. 1929, 28-11. Jair. 429, 30. The ashes that are on it shall be poured out. The altar is thereby profaned. Lev. 610-13. The altar also I've, the altar also was torn down. This sign, Tim 3, confirms the prophecy about Josiah and shows God's condemnation of Jeroboam's religious system. 13, 6, that my hand may be restored. God in generously healing Jeroboam's hand reaffirms the authority of his prophet. 1380 bread or drink water. For the prophet to accept this hospitality would imply his approval of Jeroboam's policies. 139 you shall neither eat nor drink nor return. The prophet has explicit instructions from God about his personal conduct. V17 lived in Bethel. The old prophet is from the north, unlike the man of God from Judah. 13 for 18 he lied to him. The man of God from Judah cannot know this except that the new revelation violates his own orders from God. 1320 the word of the Lord. Ironically, God uses the old lying prophet of Bethel to deliver a true prophecy. Far v. 1322, your body shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. In ancient Israel, it was considered important to be buried along with one's ancestors in the family burial plot. 121. CF. General 4730. Josh. 24. 32. Took us am. Jew. 32. 17. 23. 13. 24. The donkey. Lion. The strange behavior of the animals is understood to be miraculous, and when news of it reaches the old prophet, he immediately understands its significance. 1330, alas, my brother, this lament is appropriate for an equal, not for a superior. C.F. Jair. 2218. 1331. Lay my bones beside his bones. The old prophet identifies himself with the prophecy of the man from Judah by having himself buried in the same tomb. When Josiah later desecrates the Bethel altar, he does not disturb the bones out of respect for the prophet from Judah. Two kin. 23, 17, 18, 13, 34. 
sin to the house of Jeroboam. See note on 1230, chapter 14, 14. Abijah the son of Jeroboam fell sick. People in OT times sometimes look to prophets to heal diseases. Two kin. 418 stresses someone who won Sir Warteen, or to predict the fate of someone who was ill. Two kin. 14 to disguise yourself. Jeroboam evidently fears the prophet and thinks his son will be treated better if he is not associated with him. It is ironic to think, however, that one can fool a true prophet of the Lord with a human disguise. CV 6. 14 3. Take 10 loaves. Jeroboam's wife is to carry these gifts fit for a commoner, but not for royalty. 1 Sam 9 6 8. 2 Kin 5 15 8 8. To ingratiate herself with a hija. 14 Halin dogs shall eat the birds of the heavens. See Doit 2 8 26. Such curses are typical of the ancient world. CF 1 Sam 17 44. 14 15. The Lord will root up Israel out of this good land. The possibility of exile for apostasy is raised in the Mosaic Covenant. Dyer 28 63 64. 29 20. In Joshua's farewell speech. Josh 2003 15 16. And in Solomon's Temple Prayer. 833 34. 46 53. Asherim, probably carved figures of the Canaanite goddess Asherah, a consort of Baal, X, Dut, 12-3, Judge, 3, Tirza, 14-17 Tirza. Tirza is 5 miles, 8 kilometers northeast of Shechem, and 5 miles, 8 kilometers, directly east of Samaria. It is Jeroboam's place of residence and later the capital of Israel, 1533, until Omri builds the city of Samaria, 1624, as she came to the threshold. The death of Abijah is an indication that Ahijah's other prophecies will come true. V. Teen. The rest of the Acts. The biblical writer has written what he considers important for his readers to know, rather than an exhaustive account of Jeroboam's reign. Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. See note on 1141 and Introduction. Author. 14 20, 22 years. 930. 909 billions. Uh, Nadab. A few particulars of his reign are later summarized, beginning in 1525. 31. 14 to 131, these verses summarize the reign of Rehoboam, Solomon's son and immediate successor. His reign is marked by growing idolatry and immorality, loss of treasures to the king of Egypt, and continual warfare with Jeroboam. 1421, Rehoboam. The author switches his attention to the southern kingdom, recording events that chronologically overlap with events in the north. 17 years. 930, 913 billion C, 1422, Judah. The Septuagint reads Rehoboam CF, 2 CHR, 1214, which reads, He did evil. Normally, the ethical nature of either Israel or Judah is evaluated in terms of the character of its king. The adage, like king, like nation, is commonly true. Here, however, the nation is being characterized by how it acts in general. Judah, as a whole, has apostatized. 1423 High Places, see note on 3-2, pillars, basically stones set up on the ground. Many of these sacred stones are used in this era by the Canaanites in their worship. Such pillars are forbidden in Israel's law. Erex, 23-24, Lev, 26 do it. 12 for 3. 16.22. Asherim. See note on V15. Under every green tree, religious activities carried out near certain trees in OT times are considered of special significance. Dut. 12 for 2. 2 kin. 17.10. Tomb. Two. Ezek. 6.13. Hose. 4.13. 14 at and 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 four male cult prostitutes. The Canaanites believe that ritual prostitution helps to ensure the fertility of land, flocks, and people. It is forbidden in Israel. Doit. 118. Kin. 1512. 22. 46. 2 Kin. 23. 7. 414. 1425. Shishak. He founded the 22nd dynasty over Egypt and began to rule around 945 BC. According to Egyptian sources, including a fragment of a stele monument from Shishak's campaign, Shishak also invaded Judah and Israel, inflicting widespread destruction. 11, 14 as 26, he took away the treasures. That is, treasures stored in the temple by King Solomon. 751. 1427, shields of bronze. The independent kingdom of Judah is too small and too poor to be able to replace Solomon's shields exactly. 1429, book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. See note on 1141. 1430, war continually. Minor border skirmishes and full-fledged wars between Israel and Judah characterize the early history of the divided monarchy. 1224, 14, 15th, 6, 2, CR, 13, 1, Nama the Ammonite. Rehoboam was born of one of Solomon's marriages to foreign women. Luke 24, 
135, Chapter 24, 24, 153, each gospel, Luke 24, 135. Okay, let's open up our Bibles to Luke 24, and we are reading Luke 24, uh, 1 through 35. Chapter 24 Luke 24 But on the first day of the week at early dawn they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And he went home marveling at what had happened. That very day two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? While he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself, how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Luke 24, 135, chapter 24. 24-153. Each gospel deals with the resurrection in its own way, though none describes how it happened. Some things are clear in all four. The empty tomb, the slowness of the disciples to believe that the resurrection had happened, and the prominence of women in the first appearances. But each gospel also has something that does not appear in the others. Luke includes the account of the walk to Emmaus and related events. 24-1. The first day of the week. This begins at sunset on Saturday, so the women have had the hours of darkness to complete their preparations before setting out for the tomb at daybreak. 24th Sue. 
3 in the first century, a stone tomb was closed by rolling a stone in front of the opening, Mark 15, 46 note. Matthew notes that a seal was placed on the stone, signifying that Roman imperial authority would punish anyone who disturbed it, Matt. 27, 66, 24, 4, two men in dazzling apparel, spirit messengers, angels, V23 sent by God appear to be men, but their dazzling clothing shows that they are not human beings, Acts 1, 10. 24, 6, 7, as the angels remind the women, Jesus told his followers repeatedly that he must suffer, die, and be raised on the third day, 9, 22, 44, 17, 25, 18, 32, 33, 22, 37. This was God's sovereign plan announced in the OT, 24, 25, 26, 44. Acts 17, 2, 3, 24, 9, all the rest. There is a large group of Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, in addition to the eleven apostles. Many are Galileans who traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover, including those who accompanied his triumphal entry, 1937, 410 Mary Magdalene is the first to see the risen Lord, John 2018. She is mentioned in all four Gospels in connection with the crucifixion and the resurrection, but otherwise we hear of her only in A2, where we learn that Jesus had exercised seven demons from her. For eleven they did not believe them. In general, the testimony of women was not highly regarded by first-century Jews, and some rabbinic tradition deemed their testimony inadmissible in a court of law. This mindset lies behind the misgivings later expressed by two disciples en route to Emmaus. VV, 2002-24. This detail exposes the mistake of the rumor later circulated by the Sanhedrin that Jesus' body was stolen. Matt, 2 8 11, 15 Peter's marveling is ambiguous, indicating astonishment or confusion, but not necessarily faith. 2413 Emmaus. The exact site is not known, although Luke gives its distance, about seven miles eleven kilometers from Jerusalem. 416 Their eyes were kept. This appears to mean that God has prevented them from recognizing Jesus at this time. When they have been persuaded from Moses and the prophets to expect the Messiah's suffering and resurrection, they will be ready to recognize him. See 1629, 31. 2418 Cleopas is not mentioned elsewhere, nor is his companion identified. 419 A prophet mighty in deed and word. Stephen will describe Moses in similar terms, Acts 7.22. Luke will summarize the contents of this gospel, his first book, as all that Jesus began to do and teach, Acts 1.1. 2.4.20. Our chief priests and rulers. The disciples placed the principal responsibility for Jesus' death on their own people, not on the Romans. 4.21. Redeem. The word means to set free by paying a price. Clearly, the two are thinking of the political deliverance of their nation. 24. 22-24, the women's report of the empty tomb, confirmed by men, and the vision of angels amazes these men, but does nothing to alleviate their sadness. For 17, or dashed hopes, v. 4-25, O oh foolish ones, and slow of heart. Their failure to embrace the scripture's predictions of the Messiah's suffering and subsequent glory is attributable not to the Bible's obscurity, but to their spiritual blindness. 4-26, suffer, enter, glory, CVV. Peter gives a similar outline of the message of the OT in Pet. 1 10, 11, 24, 27, Moses and all the prophets. The first two sections of the Hebrew OT canon are the books of Moses, Genesis, Deuteronomy, and the prophets, which in the Jewish reckoning include historical books such as Joshua, Judges, Samuel and Kings, as well as prophetical writings such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Minor Prophets. Throughout these portions of God's Word, Jesus shows them promises and foreshadowings of Himself and His mission. See note on 2 4 44. 2 4 30 took the bread. Blessed broke, gave it to them. These were actions a host performs at a meal, but they are also reminiscent of Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper a few evenings earlier, 22.19. E.F. 9.16. 2.4.31. Their eyes were opened. This is by divine action. C.F. Four hearts burn within us, even before they recognize Jesus. His opening of the scriptures to show them his suffering and subsequent glory replaces their despair with faith and joy. 434 They had not believed the women, VV11, but an appearance to Simon Peter is more convincing. Wow, well, that was. that was a lot. But it was a lot of beautiful scripture. Um, praise the Lord that Jesus not only died for our sins, but he was raised for our justification. Um, he, you know, people, anyone, any, like, to be frank, like any idiot who doesn't believe that Jesus raised, 
is just being historically inaccurate and they have no true saving faith because um, you, you have to understand the entirety of Jesus's work. <clears throat> Again, though, we need God to open our eyes. So we're all just a bunch of idiots without Jesus. So uh, without God uh, mercifully opening our eyes to the truth. Oh, praise God. Um, but yeah, Jesus is risen. He is risen. And we have... We can have hope because he is risen. Um, and look forward to being with him forever. If we are truly in Christ, having repented of our sins and put our faith fully in Christ, not in not anything we can do, but in Christ's finished work and now following him as a result of that, um, as a fruit of his work in us, Lord. Lord, please help us continue to understand that, who you are and what you've done, Lord, and what that requires. Or what the response, proper response is. Uh, you know how much we need you. You know how much this lost nation, America, uh, needs you. Uh, and all the nations, Lord, your people. Um, whom you will call out from each tribe, nation, and tongue. We need you desperately, Lord. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's, like, actually close in prayer rather than me just, like, talking out loud. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you so much that, um, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for what you did in our place. Um, we know, that I know that I need you, Lord. May you continue to make us aware of our need for you, Lord. Uh, would you please guide us in all our ways, Lord? Uh, forgive us of our sins, Lord, and renew within us a right mind. Renew us according to your word. Um, draw us near according to your word, Lord. Continue to help us to hunger and thirst after doing your will, Lord. Um, because you are forever. You are You are God, and we are not. And Lord, I just also want to lift up to you any family members that we may have or friends that we may have that do not know you. Father, I pray that you would help us to be a light to them, to share the gospel with them, and that you would use it to um, draw them to you, Jesus. That you would help us to be patient um, and also to not become stained by this world, to be uns but to be unstained um, and to love in the midst of... Um, whatever, Lord. We we need you, Lord. Help us be rooted in your word, rooted in your, a local biblical church, Lord. Um, yeah. Thanks that you are Lord. Thanks that you are the King of Kings, Lord. You're sovereign. But yeah, um, please keep us from from making stupid decisions like Solomon did, where he was led astray by his lusts, Lord, help us to not be that way. And help us to not be overly harsh like they were towards um, the people that served them, but just in general, like, help us to be servants uh, as you were servant, Jesus. Help us to not be all about self in such a selfish world, and um, help us to not do that, Lord, but to be... Um, be like you, Jesus, um, that you laid your life down and you humbled yourself to the point of death, even death on a cross, so that all who come to you in true saving faith would be healed and be saved. In other words, Lord, um, if there's anyone in this video that doesn't know you, please save them. If there's anyone in this video who's watching this video who, um, who is not going to a good biblical church, Lord, would you please get them rooted in a biblical church day in, day out, hearing your word um, every Sunday and, and meeting with the church throughout the week, Lord. Get us off of the internet so much and get us into your, your arms and to the arms of your people, Lord. 
to serve one another in love, to hear the word preached. Lord, we, we love you. We want to delight in you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Well, grace and peace is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you in the next video.